Welcome back to another Power BI DAX tutorial. It's me, BA Sensei. <laughs> so what we're going to look at this week is specifically parent-child hierarchies in Power BI. So before I actually go on, I'm just going to show you some examples of what I mean and what the properties are of the parent-child, um, the kind of parent-child entities I'm looking at. In this example, we have a typical organizational structure. You've got various roles. Uh, the roles uh, are rolled up to business units, the business units rolled up to management, and that rolls up to organization. The typical feature you can see here is only one parent for each role or business unit. Any given node only has one parent. And you can see variable depth of the hierarchy. Okay, another example would be something like a chart of accounts. You have an account that belongs to um, a hierarchy above, so that's so account number 1110 is cash, that's a current asset, that's an asset, and that belongs to the top node. So once again, same kind of characteristics. Let's look at another example. Uh, where is it? Uh, to chart of accounts. If we look at files on your computer, a file can only belong to one folder. A folder can belong to another folder, and that would be on a drive. But the, the key feature here is only one parent. An example of what I'm not going to be dealing with in this video, and that's excellent from this video, is something like an individual node that has more than one parent. So if you look at this as a stock portfolio, one given stock of Netflix, Tesla, and Apple, if you look at Netflix, that basically has, um, is a child of three portfolios. We're not going to be looking at any node with more than one parent. Okay, so let me quickly show you what the end result would be of this video, what we want to achieve at the end here. We want to have something like this, where let's say we have a, a data set, we want to see the total sales throughout the hierarchy. So we look in this adventure works. We want to see all the regions of stores. You can see we have European, North American, and Pacific operations. And then you can drill in. You can see the North American, and you can drill into all its divisions. And USA, you can look at all that. So this is basically what we want to see with parent-child relationships here. That's the, the end game. Before we go on, let's quickly look at example data sets we're going to have here. Um, this data model, what we have here is we got um, a fact finance table here. That fact finance table has organization with hierarchies in it. We got uh, departments and we got obviously the date of the transaction and then the DIM accounts. That's our chart of accounts over there. So what I'm going to show you quickly is an example of what that data actually looks like inside of, if we look at the organizational um, unit, we can see that <clears throat> we have the organization names and we can notice the primary keys of each one of these nodes. They have a reference to a parent. So you can see this one has a reference to that one. And the top node has a blank reference in the parent, uh, the parent key. That's an important characteristic. Tabular can only deal with that. Okay. So you basically have essentially a table referring to itself. Uh, if we look at departments, all of these departments refer to corporate, and corporate is the, the top node. If we look at the chart of accounts here, you can see assets refer to balance sheet, and balance sheet is the highest, and you can go down the, the node list like that. Cool, this is, the, this is the kind of structure we're looking at. So once again, only one parent. One of the other characteristics, each node does only have one parent. One of the key characteristics is the top node has a blank space there, and you have variable depth um, for each parent-child relationship. All right, so the first thing we're going to look at is we're going to look at the a dim organization dimension, and we're going to we're going to flatten the structure, essentially. That's our first step. So let's flatten the hierarchy. First thing we're going to do is we're going to add a new column. First thing, we're going to use the path function. So the path function will basically give us the ability to, in one row, in one column, it's going to basically give us the complete path um, for each of these nodes. So you can see... The inputs there is what's the organization key and then what the parent key is. But remember, this thing will bomb out if you don't have any parent. So let's see what it gives us. Cool. So now you can see the path of each one of these individual nodes. Okay. Cool. First one. So second second part, uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to add a little measure to see how deep each of the nodes go. So the the, the depth of each parent-child relationship. I'm just going to paste them here. We're going to use the path link function, and we're going to refer to the organization path we created just now. So let's do exactly that. 
So now you can see some of these lay on level four, some on three, some on two. Obviously, the head is the top level is sitting at one. Okay, so now to flatten the structure, we're going to add, we can see the max depth here is four. So we're going to add four level columns with the name of each parent organization under each level. So let's quickly do that again. So now let's go to a new column. I'll quickly take you through this. Okay, so for level one, we declare a variable for the level number just to make it easy to deal with with level two, three, and four. Uh, we're going to determine the level key. We use the path item function over here. If you can see the inputs here, we need to give it a path. The path we already um, determined. We know we need to know what level it is, and we know this level is going to be level one, and we know that the key type is integer. Okay, there we go. So now the level name, with level name, now that we know what the parent is, we use lookup value to determine and return the name of each level key. So the parent, direct parent, and the result is we're just going to return the level name. So let's quickly see. So for level one, all of these should return level one, which is adventure work cycle. So now let's just copy this code. Now we're going to do it for level two. So we add level two, we say new column. Add it in there. Let's just take that out, make that two, two. Excellent. So now we have flattened the structure. All right. Next step. Let's quickly create the hierarchy. So I'm going to. This flattened structure we created, we're going to say create a new hierarchy. Level hierarchy. Let's just rename that to levels, org levels. Okay, cool. And you can see level one is part of that. Let's quickly take level two and add it to there. Level three, add it to there. Level four, add it to the hierarchy as well. So now we have our own hierarchy here. So what are we going to do is let's quickly drop a matrix visual in here. Let's bring the matrix in here. And then we say, bring the organizational level as rows. There we go. So now we have all of that. OK, cool. So what we're going to do is we're now going to take the total amounts and we're just going to drag it in there. We want to see. Ah, excellent. So now we can actually see our sales for each level. Just note one problem though, we're going to deal with it now. So European uh, uh, operations under France, oh, there's a blank. Under Germany, oh, there's a blank. That's because we are now looking at level four. And because of that, under France and Germany, there's no level four. So it returns a blank. So we don't really want that. But under USA, we will basically, in Canada, we will have various regions with that in. But there, uh, we need to get rid of that. So what do we do now? First thing that we do is, let's quickly add a new measure here. So with this one, we're just going to get the maximum for each one of those nodes in, in this um, uh, table, in this matrix table. We're going to find the, the max depth, okay? So the max depth of each of the nodes in there. So we know what that is. Okay, cool. Second thing we're going to do is, we're going to use the is in scope function, which we used in the previous video, to determine whether each row is in scope. Is the level in scope for each of these nodes? Yes. Let's quickly see. What we're saying here is, so for each one of these rows, is level one in scope? Yes or no. Is level two in scope? Yes or no. Three and four. Okay. Cool. So we have that. And then lastly, what we're going to do is we're going to create another total amount. This time, taking those two things into consideration. Let me quickly show you what we're going to do. We're going to say your total value, so first variable total, total amount. So we use what we used before. Basically, should we show the entity row? Yes or no? Okay, so if the entity row depth is bigger or equal to the entity browse depth, Yes or no? If it is true, then show a value. Otherwise, don't show a value. Return the result. Let's quickly see what that brings back. 
if I drag that in, let's start a new visual. And I'm just going to take that one out. Let's drag total two in there. So now you can see there are no blank values. Cool. Exact same result, no blank values. How cool is that? Excellent. The next video we will look at uh, applying this to a chart of accounts.